England's seas are vital to our economy, environment and communities. Marine plans developed by the Marine Management Organisation under the Marine and Coastal Access Act 2009 ensure activities happen in the right place at the right time and in the right way, supporting sustainable development in the English marine area. This video helps applicants and decision makers navigate the marine plan-led decision-making process. Marine plans provide a strategic approach to balancing economic growth, social needs and environmental protection in an increasingly busy marine environment. Under Section 58.1 of the Act, authorisation and enforcement decisions must be made in accordance with marine plans. These include things like a consent, approval or licence that affects or might affect the marine area. This video is going to focus on the marine licensing process and its use of the Marine Plan Policy Assessment. However, its application can be applied to any decisions under Section 58.1. In today's digital first world, the assessment supports applicants and decision makers in navigating this process efficiently, ensuring compliance and promoting sustainability. Let's break this down. For a marine license application, you will need to consider how your proposal aligns with relevant marine plan policies. When submitting an application through the Marine Case Management System, it automatically identifies applicable policies based on location coordinates. As an applicant, you must then complete the Marine Plan Policy Assessment, providing justification and supporting evidence. To support this process, it's good practice to engage with local stakeholders and marine users early on to help evidence policy compliance or show non-applicability. Within the assessment, you should avoid marking policies as not applicable without clear justification. Instead, provide concise explanations to support this. Sustainable development requires decision makers to consider social, economic and environmental needs. To promote this, you should assess how your proposal interacts with all relevant marine plan policies. For instance, a port development might address policies on economic growth and environmental mitigation, while a renewable energy project could highlight climate change contributions and infrastructure needs. Decision makers, such as an MMO case team in this example, review your assessments alongside input from primary advisors, such as Natural England, Trinity House and local planning authorities. While some proposals may not fully align with marine plan policies, decision makers evaluate whether approval can still be granted based on the justification provided and the wider application context. There are tools and guidance available to simplify the process by allowing you to search for relevant policies ahead of submitting a marine license application and to ensure the marine plan is considered at the beginning of your proposal design. For additional guidance, including detailed information on Section 58.1 decisions, visit the Using Marine Plans page on gov.uk. Having completed the assessment thoroughly and aligning with marine plans, you save time, contribute to sustainable development, reduce legal challenge and fulfil your legal obligations. Unlike Section 58.1 decisions, which must be made in accordance with marine plans, Section 58.3 applies to any other decisions that are not authorisation or enforcement that may affect the marine area. These decisions must have regard to marine plans in their decision making. These include a coastal local planning authority decision when adopting a local plan. This ensures consistency and integration between marine and land use planning. 
Marine plans guide sustainable development while considering the environment, economy and society. Use tools like Explore Marine Plans and further available guidance to align your proposals with marine plan policies. Together, we can shape a prosperous future for our seas, coasts and communities.